Yogi Berra once says, we don't know what we don't know. In yesterday's reading from Acts of the Apostles, the disciples in Ephesus are not fully initiated into the way of Jesus, and yet they live as though they have been. Only when St. Paul comes and speaks to them about baptism in the Holy Spirit do they learn that there is more. They begin to speak in tongues, different languages, and prophesy, surely gifts that mark a new awareness and direction in their Christian practice. Like the disciples in Ephesus, we too, we live in a state of not knowing what we should know in our faith. Who is the Paul in our lives who will come to anoint us with the Holy Spirit? It could come from reading the scriptures or from listening the word of God through the lectionary, a spark from a homily or an insight through personal reflection may inspire us an awareness of our faith that is new to us and in enlivening us. Our day-to-day -day living is filled with opportunities to see and know God in new and different ways. For example, in Luke chapter 24, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they encounter Jesus who interprets scripture for them before they break the bread together. Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is why we strongly encourage everyone to engage in lifelong faith formation. So whether we're 8 years old or 80 years old, we never stop learning about our faith. So we study art and architecture and music and history and scriptures. In today's reading, there's a touch of irony in Paul's words. He has served the Lord with all humility, he writes earnestly borne witness to Jesus Christ, so the people will repent. Yet now he is compelled by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem, where imprisonment and hardships await him. And that's not exactly something to look forward to as one begins a journey. However, Paul is beyond the point of worrying about his safety and conduct. He is focused on the mission and on the work he must do and must finish. He must continue to bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, to the gospel of God's grace. There's a popular mantra from Gandhi that essentially says, be the change you want to see in the world. I'll say that again, be the change you want to see in the world. Now this notion of be the change you want to see in the world does essentially three things when we adopt it in our life. First, it stops us from judging others. Second, it replaces complaining about others with reflection upon our own self. And third, it stirs us into taking action with the only thing in this world that we have control over, and that is of ourselves. That statement, be the change you want to see in this world, is revealing a profound spiritual truth that what we see in this world is no more or no less a reflection of what is unseen inside each and every one of us. The real change comes when we go within and do the work of inner transformation to examine ourselves openly, honestly, even vulnerably, and to purge out any semblance of selfishness, insecurity, or sin. See, when that happens, then we will bring positive change to ourselves and to the world. Stay spiritually strong, everybody.